Hey my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you five awesome ways how to mask things in Affinity Photo that will blow your mind. And I know masking can be stressful if you don't know which tools are the right one. And a lot of people look like this when they think about masks because it can be a headache. But after this video, I promise you're going to look like this. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer. And of course, I want to thank all my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Okay, so here we have this photo and it's a nice picture, but it could be improved. One of the most amazing things you can do with masks is to use them with a group because that means you can apply multiple adjustments to the same area. First of all, I'm going to create an adjustment layer. Click on adjustment and this time I'm using a curve adjustment. And with this layer created, on your keyboard press Ctrl and G to create the group like that. You can see now it's in a group. And the next thing is that we will apply a mask to that group. And here's a little bit of secret sauce for you. We're going to click down here on the mask layer icon to create the layer. But at the same time, we're going to hold the Alt key and this is going to create an empty mask where the effect is not applied to our picture yet. So open up your group double click on the curves layer and pull it down maybe stronger than you need it and this will enable you to see where you're actually painting the mask so use your brush tool now set it to a low hardness but set it also to spacing two percent or lower and you can now brush in here with a white color that's important white color onto your mask. So you can see here when I paint in here, that's good enough. And the next thing is double click on the curves adjustment again and adjust it to your taste. So in this case, for example, I only want the shadows to be darker, not the brighter areas. So I will click here and here to make points that keep these, the line in this area and just pull down on the darker side of my curves and you can see here that the shadows are indeed getting darker and now like i said you can apply multiple adjustments to the same area so i'm also creating an adjustment for vibrance here and i will push the vibrance up a little bit so we get a little bit more color in our eyes and as you can see this will only affect the area that we have selected as a mask for the group. I want to separate the background with the eyes and the sea from the guy in the front. And we can use channels to make a mask to separate them. And you might think, what are channels? Well, if you think, for example, about a JPEG picture that is RGB, then we have red, green, and blue as our channels. So where do you find the channels? Well, Either you look down here on the right side where these tabs are, or if you don't see that, go up to view and then to studio and then make a check mark next to channel. So you see that after you know where to find that, you can see here we have these three different channels and you can click on them. And when you click on them, the picture turns black and white and shows you the parts that are red in the picture in this case because it's the red channel and for us to create the mask we have to remember that everything that is white is going to be masked and everything that is black is not going to be masked so in this case we still have a lot of white in the foreground where the guy is with the boat so let's click on green and that is all that already a lot better but parts of the jacket are still very bright so let's click on the blue one and now the boat and the guy are almost black so this is pretty good for us and also you have to remember we don't want to completely mask it we want to have like a gradient in there a little bit so still the adjustments feel natural and the object isn't completely separated from the rest of the picture okay next point you just right click on the channel and there it says load to pixel selection click on that and this will create a selection for you and now there are two routes that you can go and you have to decide what you want to do one is you can click down here on mask layer and this will create a mask layer from the selection of these pixels and you can apply the mask to any layer you want so this is very versatile but what you can also do is you can click on either 
any adjustment layer or any live filter layer and it will apply this selection as a mask to that adjustment layer, for example. And this is what we will do in this tutorial. So click and select curves as our adjustment layer. And now to deselect, press Control D on my keyboard. The picture is still black and white. How do we fix that? Very easy. Down here on channels, you just click on this reset button and this will bring back all of the channels. Okay, so now if we adjust the curves, you can see that this is mainly adjusting the background and not the foreground. So we can make our picture a little bit darker and this can be very helpful for us. Let's go on to the next step. We have here this motor of the boat and we wanted to stand out a little more and a smart way how to select that and also a little bit of secret sauce by the way. We're going to use our pen tool which is over here. Either you see this white arrow, which is the note tool, then click and hold until this little menu pops up and select the pen tool. Okay. With the pen tool selected, we can click, click, click around our shape. So when you click on the starting point, this will close the shape and now you can fill it with a color. For example, let's fill it with black like this. There we go. Okay, cool. So now, what do we want to do? In this case, I'm going to use an adjustment layer again, and I'm going to use it for brightness and contrast like this. So we have created that. And now with the curve that we have created, I will push this layer on top of our brightness and contrast adjustment and then right click on it and say mask to below. Okay. so. You can see now the shape is gone because it is used as a mask. And when I now adjust my brightness and contrast, you can see that this is only applied to our um, engine here where we have created the mask. So this is a nice way to do it. But why did we use a curve for that? Well, the reason for that is I can still go to the curve and now I can use my note tool, this white arrow here, and I still have all these points and I can go in here and say, I want to adjust these points. You can see I can pull them out. So the effect is applied to more of the area, but you can basically move it around and say, okay, I want to have this on different areas of my picture. I want to be a bit more uh, uh, precise down here, stuff like that. So this is a very good way to adjust your, um, your layer. And by the way, if you say, well, this is a little bit sharp as a mask, uh, for example, if we make the effect a little bit stronger, you can see these are like pretty sharp lines here, which can be useful sometimes, but not all the time. You can, of course, go in here with your curve selected to effects and make a little bit of Gaussian blur on there. And as you can see, this will make the selection a bit softer. So let's go with 0.1 pixel and you can see now we have a nice and soft selection. Okay, let's zoom out again. So this was the second one, creating a mask from a curve and mask down. Okay, next one is a gradient mask. So we have this ice here in the background. We want to have a bit more clarity. So more focus is on this part of the picture, but we don't want to have more clarity in the foreground or in the background. How are we going to do that? So first of all, we are going to create an adjustment for clarity. And this is a live filter, by the way. So click on live filters and create a clarity live filter like this. Make sure it sits outside on its own not like in this case under one of the adjustment layers because then you can't see the effect. So now if I push this up, you can see we get a lot more clarity in the background, but also in the foreground. And I don't want to have that because I don't want to distract from the ice shapes in the background. So the way to do this is that we are going to select over here our gradient tool, this here, and I want to click and pull in the area of our, well, where we want to affect the area of the picture, basically. And this is a linear gradient, so it's just going from top to down over the full width of the picture. And again, you can go in here and select white or black. And you can see here when I select a point in the middle and I make this white, 
and then I make the edges black. Like before, where it is black, the effect is not applied and where it is white, the effect is applied. And you have these little lines here, you can push them out to make the gradient a bit like different from the way it's going from one color to the next color. Okay, good. So now if we adjust the gradient again, you can see that it is only applied to that area where the eyes is, but not to the foreground, not to the background, just to this area in here. And this is what you can do with a gradient. And as you can see, you can do it also with a live filter. So this is the third one. Now comes the fourth one, which is also very useful. And that is that we can create a brush mask. So here, and also here, a little bit of secret sauce for you again, I'm gonna select adjustment and selective color. This is a very good effect. Remember that selective color like that. And you go to the neutrals, go to the neutrals and then adjust the black. And you can see here that this magically improves the picture and makes it makes it look like a lot more interesting. But as you can see here, although this effect is pretty cool, the face now is a little bit too dark. So I want to zoom in here to the face. And what I'm going to do is I'm using my paintbrush tool. And when you use the paintbrush tool, another secret sauce here, also always make sure that you click on more and make sure that the spacing is very low, like one or 2%. So there are no gaps in between, because you can see if I push the spacing up, I get these single dots. We don't want to have that. We want to have a consistent connected line. So push it down to 2%. Let's go back in here and again, set your, in this case, set your color to black because we don't want the filter, the adjustment to affect the face. Okay, now we can just brush over the area of the face like that. And there we go. Now the face is unaffected. And if we zoom out, you can see that now the face is a lot brighter than before or like as it has been before that. By the way, if you want to know where you have painted with your brush, there's an easy way to find that out. Hold the Alt key on your keyboard and click on the layer where you painted the mask like that. And you can see we get a little shape in here that tells us exactly where we painted. So you can see here are actually some bright spots. You can paint over that again. And to get back to the normal view, the only thing you have to do is simply click on another layer and there you have the normal view back again. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you very much. Write in the comments which kind of mask you like the most or use the most. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.